Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another day of distance learning. Uh, it's a new week. We're at the end of the school year, and I've got my partner, Rachel, here to do something a little bit different this week for discipleship time. But as always, we're going to ground ourselves in God's Word. So, uh, And we're going to remind ourselves of our identity, purpose, and action. So, who are we? We are children of God, loved and saved by Jesus. What's our purpose? To make God make known, known through serving, serving leadership. leadership. And how do we do this? We love God and we love others. Good job, Rach. Um, so, Rachel, tell me, what's your favorite Bible story? The Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan. I like that one, too. And uh, thanks, uh, Mrs. Schultz, for teaching that in Sunday school this weekend. Um, why do you like the Good Samaritan? Because the Good Samaritan showed love. He did show love. And um, that is a, a great reason to like that story. You know why I like that story? It's because Jesus teaches us the importance of our identity. And that's what he was teaching an expert in the law. Now let me give you a little background on this. So the chapter before the Good Samaritan, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to die on the cross for our sins. And he's going to stop by a Samaritan village. So he sends some disciples to, to make arrangements. But the Samaritan village says, we don't want Jesus to stay here. And the disciples ask Jesus, well, that's not cool. Should we send down fire from heaven like Elijah did back in the old days? And Jesus says, no, 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 we don't do that. Keep moving on. Well, you remember how the Samaritans and the Jews had that conflict in the big picture back in the Old Testament? Well, that happened with Jesus. And then Jesus tells this parable. But here's what happens. An expert in the law comes to Jesus, and that means he's an expert in the Old Testament, in the law of Moses. And he says, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, that's kind of a silly question, and Jesus knows that you don't do anything to inherit eternal life because Jesus did it for us. He lived, he died, he rose again, therefore it's a gift from God. But Jesus asks him the question anyways, he says, well, what do you think? you need to do. And uh, the man says, well, how about love God and love my neighbor? Well, that's what children of God do, right? And that's not a bad answer, but it's not how you inherit eternal life. The word inherit means you get something after someone is gone. So uh, a lot of times when parents or grandparents uh, pass away and they go to heaven, they leave something for their kids, like a house or maybe money or something. You inherit something because of who you are, not because of what you do. And so when the man says, love God, love your neighbor, Jesus says, well, that's a good answer. But he knows that no one can do it perfectly. And he knows this expert in the law can't do it perfectly. But he says this to him. He says, go, you, you go and do this likewise. Yeah, go do it. But no, you know what? The man doesn't feel good about that because he knows his own life. And he says, I'm not so sure about this. And so he goes back to Jesus and he says, Jesus, who's my neighbor? You know, because he's trying to justify himself, trust, you know, trust in himself. And Jesus says, uh, you want to know who your neighbor is? Let me tell you a story. Story of a good Samaritan. And that's where the story comes in. And so Jesus tells this story and he says, there was this man who was going down to uh, Jerusalem. He was a Jew and he got beat up by some robbers and left for dead. And then a priest walks by, and you'd think the priest would help him out, but the priest just walked by and ignored him. And then a Levite, who is someone who works in the temple, walked by, but he just ignored him too. And then the Samaritan walked by. You think the Samaritan stopped? Rachel, what do you think? Yes. And that's kind of odd because Jews and Samaritans didn't get along, but this Samaritan stopped anyways because he cared for the person. And he took him to an inn, he took care of all of his needs, and he even paid for his needs to be taken care of in the future. And then Jesus, after telling this story, asked the expert in the law, who was the, the good neighbor? And you know what? That expert in the law, he struggled to say the word Samaritan because he didn't like Samaritans. And he realized inside that, you know, he couldn't do everything by himself. He needed Jesus too. And he says, the man who showed mercy. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. 
So the Good Samaritan not only teaches us that we're supposed to love our neighbor no matter who that person is, and also teaches us that none of us can save ourselves. We can't justify ourselves. We know we're supposed to love God and love others, but we don't always do it. Sometimes we don't do what our mom and dads want us to do. Sometimes we don't do what our teachers want us to do. Sometimes we just don't do what God wants us to do. But God loves us so much he sent Jesus, who's like that good Samaritan. He loved us and took care of all of our needs by dying on the cross and rising from the dead. And that's the story of the good Samaritan. Well, hopefully that helps everyone think about how they can love uh, each other today as we uh, go on with our lives and making God known through serving leadership. But now let's go on to some announcements. How about that? All right. All right. Well, uh, we had our Duolingo challenge this week. And uh, as you can tell by my face, uh, uh, I didn't. it didn't go well for me. Um, I did 15 lessons of German. That is uh, 15 lessons of Deutsch for all you German speakers. And uh, I thought I was in good shape. That's three a day. Uh, but then Mrs. Fotenhauer's mom up in South Dakota did 25. And Laura Live from fourth grade did 33. Get that, 33 in five days. How am I supposed to beat that? Well, uh, got a little video for you. Uh, you know, when I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. So I lost. So I paid the price. My uh, helpful companions were there to help out. And, uh, yes, I took the ice bucket. Um, uh, you know, again, uh, sehr schlecht for mich, uh, but uh, it came, and it was uh, sehr cold. And uh, uh, I'm not sure why Elise is smiling after it all, but, uh, Rachel, any, any comments on the ice bucket challenge? I gave him towels. You did give me a towel. You're like the Good Samaritan. When I was uh, frozen by Elise, Rachel was there to give me a towel. She loved her neighbor. That's right. Okay. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, all you who came out to grab some ice cream on Student Appreciation Day. Thank all the teachers for coming out. It was just great to see everyone. I think uh, uh, someone put it well. It was just great to see everyone in 3D, right? So uh, we'll continue to celebrate this week as we close out the year. And then announcements. It's a, it's a pretty simple one, but there's a lot behind it. Follow the instructions from the charger. Now, Friday, uh, the charger went out, and Mr. Hartman had instructions, and Mrs. Leet had instructions, and Ms. Shirley, Mrs. Shirley had instructions. And so I'm really going to encourage you and your parents to check out the charger, look at all the links and instructions for this week, and uh, touch base with your teachers. It's going to be a fun week, but there's a lot of events going on and drop-off, pick-up stuff. So please check out those instructions. And uh, we'll close this morning and begin our day with uh, the morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Thanks, Rachel. Everyone have a great day in the Lord. Take care.